Hello and welcome to my third tutorial. As you can see, it's in uh, Cinema 4D this time. Uh, today I want to show you a way to animate characters uh, without the use of the conventional stuff like uh, the visual selector or hotspots or even uh, controller huts in uh, the viewport. Instead I want to show you a way to um, animate characters by making use of the interaction tag. The interaction tag is in Cinema 4D since R16 and uh, the method I'm going to use is well explained on Cineversity so if you want to dig deeper on it then uh, take a look over there. So what I'm going to do uh, for this tutorial I prepared a mesh, a stick figure and I am going to give him a very simple rig, the simplest I can find here. Uh, the biped, root and spine, I take the FK, arms, legs and the head and that's it. There is uh, no need for adjustment because I work the other way around. I fitted uh, the stick figure mesh uh, to the bones so that will be alright. So we can go on to bind like so and when we select animate now it should work. Let's see if that's true. Yeah, okay. Let's reset the pose and move on. There's another thing I prepared, it's in my content browser. I'll call it and uh, unlock it to move it a little bit. Now this guy is a, a little polygon mesh and all polygons uh, have been selected. They all have their own name and the names correspond with the names of the components in the rig. Now at the very end you see the interaction tag over there. So let me first explain what I want to do with it. So let's quick move over to another file. Here you can see uh, four cubes and a mesh with uh, four polygons. And the uh, polygons uh, all have their names. Magenta, the blue, the red and the yellow. And what I can do here is I can move rotate or scale the objects just by touching the polygons with my mouse. Well, how is this done? This is done by using the interaction tag, at least one of the functions of the interaction tag, because the interaction tag can do much more. Uh, but I do use this uh, proxy part over here, and um, I use the dynamic proxies. And um, you can only use the dynamic proxies if uh, the calculate here in the poly info the calculate poly is checked otherwise it won't work uh, live update during drag is okay as well but you need to check this one to use this one and here you need to check the other one as well the dynamic proxies because these are named here this selections the names will come here and the only thing you have to do then is drag the cubes into the fields and then they work. So this works in every way. I, I could change the hierarchy over here for instance and when I now touch the yellow one uh, they will all move. When I do the red one the three of them the magenta one, the blue one, well it's very easy so you can also change uh, the hierarchy over there. This is how it works. So to resume take the interaction tag in the poly info check the calculate poly info and use the proxies and dynamic proxies and this is where you put them. Now how does this uh, translate to the character file? In fact, I do the same thing here. I assign an interaction tag to the mesh. And you can see here now 
the pro proxy object is over here and there's nothing to see in the dynamic uh, proxies. So what I have to do now is what I told before is I have to check calculate info and if I want to live update during drag and when I now go back to the proxy you see that all the selections I named there are in the proxy field. So the next step is to find all the controllers that have to match with uh, the proxies over here. And that's very easy to do. Um, just go to the character and check the controllers over here in the viewport. And it's e even easier if you um, type con over here, then you get only the controllers. I put them aside over here. Okay. And now I get the proxy field and place it next to it. And the only thing you have to do now is drag everything in. So I'm going to do that now. And you can see the poles are missing here. And that is because they don't have the con suffix to them. So I'll just find them by looking at pole. Here they are. Left leg pole, right leg pole. And everything is done. And the last thing I do here is I give this animation system a protection tag because I don't want to move it uh, when I touch it. Now, in fact, it should work. So when I would move this one, it should uh, at least move or rotate uh, the torso, but it doesn't. And I know why this is, because I forgot one little thing in the, in the proxy. Uh, I forgot to check the dynamic proxies over here and uh, I show you this mistake on purpose because uh, when I did this the first time it took me a very long time to find out what was wrong over there so don't forget to check the dynamic proxies here as well another thing you'll notice is that you can't move the hands or the arm and that's because of the rig the rig is restricted uh, it's this is a, a, an FK uh, rig so uh, you should consider the arms as hinges the shoulders as hinges the elbows as hinges so you can they are restricted to only rotation so when you use rotation then everything works fine I, I like this way of animating very much uh, for me, uh, IK in the arm is not necessary, but this is just a personal thing. This is why I can work with a very simple rigs. Uh, generally spoken, you could say the lower part can do both, like uh, move and rotation. But what I like so much about it is that you can actually uh, use like three ways to, uh, to tweak your animation. So the first one is just to touch the proxy and then you can put it in the way you want it. The other one is you can tweak it by when you click the proxy somewhere halfway uh, the axis will show up and you can you can then tweak it from there. Of course you have another another axis then and the third way is when you actually choose the controller itself and it will highlight white there you can tweak it in place so you can make very precise animations and uh, poses so I like it very much there's a few things to be aware of as you can see my system is a protected and it also has a look at cam um, expression 
uh, those won't work together. But uh, I have the protection on because when you actually choose the controllers themselves, uh, there's a chance that you can lose all the proxies. So this is to prevent from that. Uh, the look at cam though is very handy. So when you remove the protection and you have to look at cam, you can choose another position to look at your animation and work from there. What I found out is that as long as you stay away from the actual controllers, you can keep it in this way. And it's of course always good to save your work once in a while. There's one more thing, um, which is more an advice. I'm not going to show you how, but uh, I advise you to put everything in layers. Uh, it's much easier to work with when you want to animate. As you can see, I only show the things that are necessary in the viewport for me and a few things I want to see in the, in the object manager. For instance, here you can see a special layer for the components with the user data. And I made that because when I have selected the arms or the legs, I want to see uh, the controls of the feet and the hands, the fingers, thumb, etc. Okay, this completes my tutorial about using the interaction tag in character animation. I find it a very pleasant method and that's why I wanted to share it with you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, maybe see you in the next tutorial. Thank you and bye bye. <laughs>